Hello, my friends. It's time for Bible. So first, what I want to do is let's start with prayer, all right? Because we should always start our day with prayer. All right, let's bow our heads. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your love for us. And Lord, I just uh, thank you for this time where we are remembering how much you love us by sending your son to die on the cross for us, Lord God, so that um, our sins are forgiven and that one day we can be in heaven with you. So Lord, just bless our time together. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, you guys, why don't we go over our Bible verse? All right, John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through me. So I'll tell you what, I'm going to say it, and you're going to repeat it after me, okay? Which, I don't know, it's going to sound a little funny because I don't have you guys talking back to me. So let's try it. It says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Your turn. Good job. No one can come to the Father. No one can come to the Father except through me. Except through me. John 14, 6. John 14, 6. Awesome. We need to remember that, especially now during this Easter time. Okay? So we are talking about Easter. And Easter is awesome. It is so, it was, we had a celebration where we talked about Christmas and Jesus being born. But now Easter is how God loved us so much that now his son has to die on a cross for us. So our sins are forgiven. Wow, that just kind of blows my mind sometimes to think that I don't know if I could do that. Send my son or daughter to be to die on a cross. That's a lot to think about. And you know, when we also talk about Easter, I know a lot of you guys talk about Easter bunny and Easter baskets and all that, but you know what? That is nothing to do with what Jesus did. All right, and so that's what we're going to talk about today. So there's a couple of things that lead up to it. All right, so let's start with that. So um, Jesus and his disciples were on their way to Jerusalem. And they're on their way to Jerusalem because it's close to the Passover. And the Passover is a big Jewish holiday. And there was a Passover uh, when Jesus was born. Mary and Joseph were going to Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover. So I believe that in all your classes, you've talked about the Passover, about how when Moses was bringing the Israelites out and they had to take blood of a lamb and put it along the doors. And then the angel of death came through. And if you did not have that blood over the doors to show you believe, then that firstborn son of each family that didn't have that blood over the door would die. And it was really quite sad, but it showed that you believed and were going to be obedient to, to God. So they kept having this Passover to celebrate how God helped them. So Jesus' and disciples are on their way to Jerusalem um, for this Passover. And I think it's kind of interesting that it's Passover for when he goes for right now when he's going to die on the cross, but it was also Passover during Christmas. Isn't that something how God has this plan? And I'm always talking about how God, um, he likes order and he always has a reason for certain things. So isn't this interesting that on both of these huge occasions, they both are happening over Passover when there are so many people in Jerusalem to um, see this happen. So anyway, so they're on their way to Jerusalem. And that morning, Jesus and disciples came on kind of the outskirts of Jerusalem. And Jesus sent two of his disciples on ahead to go into the village, he told them. And as you enter, you will see a donkey tied up that has never been ridden or no one's been on it. Even a blanket hasn't been on it. This donkey has never been ridden. And what you need to do is you need to untie it and bring it to me. Now, if anyone asks you what you're doing, just say the Lord needs him and he will send him back soon. What? How weird. Because the disciples are going, wait a minute. You've been with us all this time. We haven't seen you go into Jerusalem to talk to this person about a donkey. 
So they're wondering, this can't be right. That's just a little too weird. So, but they do, they go into town. And as they walk in, lo and behold, look at this. There's a donkey. So they're in town and they see this donkey and they're wondering, oh my gosh, should we be doing this? And as they were untying the donkey, the owner called out and says, hey, 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 what are you guys doing? You're, you're taking my donkey. What are you doing? Well, the, the disciples answered just as Jesus told them to. And they said, the Lord needs him and he will send them back soon. So the owner let them take the donkey, exactly what Jesus told them. Again, what? When did Jesus come into Jerusalem to talk to this man about the donkey? Well, obviously Jesus can do anything. Now scripture says that this was all done in order to fulfill the words of Zechariah. And Zechariah was a prophet in the Old Testament. And all of this was told in the Old Testament of what was going to happen. And this, in the book of Zechariah, was said that there was going to be this donkey there. That is just so cool. You know, we need to learn that when Jesus tells us to do something, just like he told the disciples, go, and that donkey will be there. We're not going to sit there going, seriously, Jesus? I don't think so. So they had a little doubt, but they went, and they were obedient, and they did it. And look what happened. So sometimes when you have this thing that God's telling you something to do and you think, I don't know if I want to do it or not, God didn't tell you to do it for you to fail, okay? So you've got to be obedient just like the disciples were obedient. So they get this donkey and Jesus gets on it. Now just think, if you're a donkey or a horse that has never been ridden, they don't want anyone on them and they'll start bucking and jumping up and down and someone might fall off. And so I think the, the disciples were a little worried that, oh my gosh, if Jesus gets on that donkey, that donkey's going to bounce him right off. But you know, he didn't. Jesus got on that donkey and that donkey was just good as gold. And they started to go through Jerusalem to walk through Jerusalem. Jerusalem. And there was a lot of excitement going on because there is the Passover. And it's a it's a, cele a celebration of what God did and led Moses out of Egypt. So everyone was really quite excited. And many people in the crowd saw Jesus come and recognized who he was. And they started laying their coats down. Have you ever seen on TV where movie stars are coming and they put out the red carpet? And, you know, they walk the red carpet because they're really special. Well, that's kind of like what they did with Jesus is they put out their coats. They took out their outside coats and they laid them down. If they didn't have that, they would pull the um, uh, palm branches down and they pull the palm branches down just like it was he was walking on a carpet. And everyone was really quite excited. And just think, this little donkey, he's not getting excited. He's just walking along with all that excitement. You'd think he'd get all upset, but he didn't. Isn't this interesting? Because you don't want to know. Do you know who's sitting on him? His creator. Just think of that. His creator is sitting on him. I think that's kind of a cool thing. And he knew it. And he just walked along the best he could. Now, everyone is really quite excited about this person. But does Jesus look very happy? You know, he's a, he's a little serious because you know what? He knows that some of these people are just, you know kind of in the mood of being happy and they don't know what's really going on. And Jesus knows what's in their heart. Jesus knows that they're just singing hallelujah just to, or Hosanna, just to do it. And he knows what's really in their heart. And that's kind of sad to him. You know, he does look a little sad because he knows also what's in their heart, but he knows what's going to happen at the end of this journey. He knows what's going to happen. And, you know, Jesus is all God and he's all human, but, you know, he still has feelings as humans. And to know what's going to happen at the end of this, it's 
it's a, it's sad to him what he's going to have to do because he knows soon people are not going to be happy anymore. They're going to be yelling and screaming to crucify him. Gosh, would you want that? To have someone yelling and screaming to crucify you? And he knows that's going to happen. So, you know, he doesn't look very happy. But it's interesting thing is this is called the triumphal entry into Jerusalem. And triumph means um, something like a victory, a big accomplishment is coming. Well, the big accomplishment is Jesus dying on the cross. And the first thing he has to do is come into Jerusalem because God's will is going to be accomplished. Now, we call this Palm Sunday. And we sing Hosanna or Hosanna um, as a praise that he is coming in. And we want to have our hearts right. And so one of the songs is called Hosanna. And I want to uh, play it for you. And the words are on the board. And I'd like for you to sing it because on Sunday, when you go to church, well, you're right, we're not going to church. But if they sing it when you're watching it on TV or on YouTube, you could sing along. And when you can think of this Hosanna, people are singing Hosanna. And that's what it says in the Bible. They were singing Hosanna as he's walking down because they some knew he was the king. Some knew he, maybe he was the master. Maybe he was a great teacher. And they were singing Hosanna. So let's sing, let's hear this song. And hopefully Mrs. White has got this correctly. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna. up your name with hearts full of praise be exalted oh lord my god hosanna in the highest glory 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 to the king of kings glory 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 to the king of Lord, we lift up your name with hearts full of praise. Be exalted, O oh Lord my God. Glory to the King of Peace. Come on, you guys. You got to sing with me if I'm going to be singing. Now, can you just see Jesus walking down and people are singing Hosanna with their palm branches going and laying it across there? But the thing is, we can think that we have God in our hearts and we know what's going to happen. And he knows that. So now we're just so thrilled and love God so much that we want to lift up his name. Come on, you guys. Hosanna. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Lord, we lift up your name with hearts full of praise. Be exalted, O oh Lord my God. Hosanna in the highest. your name with hearts full of praise exalted oh lord my god hosanna in the guys I'm sure you sang didn't you I'm sure you did oh my goodness so 
Sorry, I got a lot of things going on here. So, whoops. So I also had all these different kinds of pictures about Palm Sunday. And um, you know what's really interesting? Is in Jerusalem today, or on Palm Sunday, they're going to recreate Palm Sunday and they go through Jerusalem. Maybe I'll try and find that and put that as a link so you can see it. And people from all over are coming. I don't know what it's gonna be like this year, but I'll try and find a link so I can show it to you how they still do Palm Sunday. They recreate it and they will also recreate Jesus walking through Jerusalem to Golgotha and Gol call Gotham, Golga. So you can see that. And it's really interesting how people still come to celebrate that. All right. Okay. I have one more for you. Okay. And I have a little, one of your favorites about Palm Sunday, which you guys love. This is Jesus, hey who is the Son of God and the Savior of the world. While Jesus was on earth, he taught everyone about God's love and healed people from their sickness. He did many miracles like calming storms and even raised people from the dead. Jewish people were celebrating a festival called Passover that had been celebrated since the time of Moses when God brought his people out of Egypt. So Jesus was going to Jerusalem to celebrate. Jesus and his disciples stopped in the town and Jesus told two of his disciples to go on ahead of them. Okay. He told them to go into a village and that they would see a young donkey that no one had ever ridden. He told them to untie it and bring it to him. If anyone asks, what are you doing? He told them to just say, the Lord needs it and will return it soon. So the disciples did what Jesus said and brought him the donkey. A long time ago, before Jesus was even born, God had said that the Savior, the King of Israel, would come to Israel in this way. And now Jesus was doing just as God had said. The news that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem swept through the city. Many heard about all the amazing things he had done, so they cut palm branches and ran to see him. Pharisees and religious rulers realized that there was nothing they could do, for everyone was going to see Jesus. Jesus rode into the city of Jerusalem, and the crowd spread their coats on the road ahead of him. His followers began to shout and sing as they walked along, praising God for all the wonderful miracles they had seen. The Pharisees were upset. And they told Jesus to stop the people from saying things like that. But Jesus said, if they keep quiet, the stones along the road would burst into tears. So the people kept on singing, blessings on the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Praise God in the highest heaven. The entire city of Jerusalem was in an uproar as he entered, asking, who is this? And the crowds replied, it's Jesus. And Jesus rode the donkey through the street of Jerusalem to the temple in a triumphal entry, just as God said he would many years before. Awesome. All right, darlings. Well, I hope you enjoyed this. And tomorrow we'll do another one. And we're going to be talking about Easter, which I just love. God loves us so much, and it just shows in everything that he does for us. All right, my loves, I will see you tomorrow. Okie doke. Well, no, I'm going to do, I'll see you later. All right, bye.